Hello and welcome to the Text Prep CAD or Computer Aid Design tutorial videos. We're going to be using SolidWorks, a very simple but very powerful software that can easily allow you to create complex or simple parts, assemblies, and design drawings. Hopefully you have the program loaded on your desktops right now. If not, go ahead and start those openings so you can follow with the video. First I'd like to show you just a blank workspace. This is before you've started any projects. There are no parts open, no drawing views, you can't really do much here except organize little files and little programs, like I have several down here that we'll be looking at later. Secondly, to begin, you want to distinguish the different types of files that SOLIDWORKS can create. The first one is a part. This is a single solid model. All the pieces are together. It's all connected. It is a single solid object. Next, there is the assembly. This is two parts stuck together or mated so that they form a more complex design called an assembly. Moving on, there's parts, there's assemblies, there is drawings. This is a technical diagram, which is how the engineer communicates his part designs to a manufacturer. If you look at the propeller and zoom in, the diameters of these holes are specified, the length of the blade is specified, the major widths of the blade profile is specified, and it's all laid out in a view called multi-view. Looking at the front here, the top, the right, and what is called an isometric view over here. This is a simple, clean way of illustrating what the part will look like from all angles and communicate effectively to the technical designers and makers of the part. We'll talk about drawings in a few weeks. Now, in order to make a part, you'll first select a part template. We'll get into those later. Here is what's called the sketch plane. In order to sketch, you'll be using several features here located on what are called ribbon tabs. Every time you click a tab, a new ribbon of tools appears. This here is the sketch pad. This is how you start all of your parts. You make simple two-dimensional or simple three-dimensional, and this whole white area we are working in is called the graphics area. As you have a part and you're looking at it, you'll notice that your mouse, with its three buttons, can do several things to this model. You can use your left click to select faces, or hold down shift, you can select multiple faces. Hold down the middle mouse button, and you can rotate or pan all around the object in order to get a look at it from a different side. Also, right-clicking will open up a whole lot of other features that you can do to manipulate or work on your piece. Something I want to point out, when you click any face, like the face of this rectangle, a little toolbar will pop up. It's called the Quick Access Toolbar. This is just common things that you can do to the model. Now, hopefully SolidWorks is loaded and you have a simple part to look at. Go ahead and hit the space bar you'll have a orientation toolbar pop-up. Now, my version may be a little different from yours. I have little pictures that show me the front, the right, or the top views. Your version may have the words spelled out directly. Front view, top view, right view. That's all right, they all do the same things. Over here, you can put an object in isometric view, diametric, or trimetric, and as you go through the class, you'll learn more what these views mean. This is just an easy way, hitting the space bar, that you can look at any view of your model. Something very important is this little option here called Normal To. Again, in your version, it may be spelled out. Go ahead and click Normal To, and you'll look straight on whatever face you've selected. All right, let's look at this propeller. Again, it's a very complex part. This is, you won't be making this your first day with SOLIDWORKS. But what I want to use this to is to demonstrate the parent-child relationship and the design tree. If you hit C, the design tree will pop up. These are all of the features and operations I did to create this part. Let's look at this loft. I'm going to click it and edit the feature. You see, this is a very complex feature. And if you'll notice, I had to define four different planes and make four different sketches to create this feature. These are what's called parent items. The sketches and the planes must be present 
for this loft feature to work correctly. Let me try deleting one of these sketches and it won't let me. It won't let me delete that because if I did, the loft would go into an error. There, there we go. I've just deleted a plane and it's not happy. Parent-child relationship. Every feature usually has a starting point with a sketch. So this sketch is the parent of this extrusion here. Without that sketch, this cylinder won't be made. And without that cylinder, this fillet wouldn't have anything to fill it. It would be just floating in air and you'll get an error. Speaking of errors, let's talk about the message area of SolidWorks. Here, you see two little yellow warning signs. Those will show up when you make them or try and rebuild them. Oh, there we go. A message box that's telling me something's wrong. Whenever something goes wrong, you will usually see that in this message box or listed down here in this little ribbon. It will give you a little message. So if you're having trouble doing something, you don't know why, check to make sure it's not trying to help you out somewhere on the screen. Now, just one last thing for this video, we're gonna talk about the reference planes or datums. These planes are the principal three axes. If you guys have learned about Cartesian coordinates, these are what they are. Here, the X direction, the Y direction, and the Z direction. And you can see there's a front plane, a right plane, and a top plane. These are how you start off your sketches on one of these principal planes or the principal axes. You can see them in there. In order to make other planes or other datums, you can insert them later on and we will get onto that in more advanced videos. Hope to see you around the lab guys and good luck learning SolidWorks.